Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV, Reborn, with... Me, Tiber. We're here in the Seventh Astral Era, talking to Alvanon after we just kicked our traitor's nasty hiney. Oh, uh, we just gave it a little bit of kicking. Anyway, what Captain Ilbert and I have a few questions for the Flame Marshal regarding the circumstances of her miraculous escape. When we have completed our inter interrogation, we will take our findings directly to General Ruban. And that should be an end of it. <laughs> no, it won't. Your work here is done, my friends. My thanks. Ah, but I have one last task for you. Return to the Rising Thrones and apprise Minfilia of what's happened. I am aware that the antecedent uh, held Rohal in high regard. For better or worse, she will want to know what, how the tale ends. Bye. Sure. Oh well, I see you later. Okay. Yeah, bud. Catch out. Oh, okay. Sparkle. Hmm? Sparkle. Sparkle fairy, activate. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkle no, Fairy, activate! Oh my god, someone's gonna turn that into a ringtone now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do, that'd be hilarious to me. If they do, you have to use it. <laughs> Sorta, I will, if that ever actually becomes famous enough to become a ringtone. <laughs> Hi, Tarter, I see you're still standing on your chair instead of doing actual work. Did you say Tiber? Tartaru. Oh, okay. Tartaru. I've only just now spawned. Boo. Really? I'm already time. Whatever. Hey, Mentelia. Look at my sword. Isn't it amazing? Look how big and hard and glowy it is. Give it a lick. I don't think it'll taste like raisins, and you'll probably cut and or burn your tongue off. No, it'll taste like ethereal current instead. It's so shiny. Ethereal oh. currents. Oh, hey, it's split. Oh, you've already got a broken weapon. Good job. Anyway, oh, talk to her now. Oh, okay. Welcome back, Ooh, my voice. friend. I have already received word from Alfino. Alfino? I thought his name was Alphanod. I think that it Flame was. Marshal Huayu was the god of I have no idea. I know not what to say. Ryu? Together with Robon, Aline lent us uh, much needed know. aid at the time of our order's founding. I don't think this is Mithilia. She was particularly passionate about the need to tackle the primal threat. When we discussed the subject, her eyes fairly shone with determination. She's brainwashed. Whatever else she may have been, I choose to believe that it was her true self with whom I spoke then. But now is not the time to dwell on such matters. I have an important announcement to make regarding our effort to defeat the Asians. We shall begin as soon as everyone is assembled. Wait, why did you deconstruct the people? Keep them constructed! Assemble. My Party thanks time. for coming, friends. Moonbreeder, the floor is yours. I'd like to think that took like three days. By now, I'm sure you're <laughs> all familiar with White Auracide. Not the really. miraculous mean, material Breda? that'll allow us to capture Asian souls. Is there a nice Breda? Look at Snowcloak. Oh, we verified its ability to absorb okay. vast amounts of ether. Oh, so that's what White, uh, White Auracide Alas, is. When did you find this? Why is this just suddenly the area of stability. The stone can only store ether for a short while before expelling its contents. In addition to Auracide's inherent limitations, we must needs be wary of our enemy's strength. Our foe draweth upon an infinite wellspring of power. Even should we succeed in entrapping him, the stone will not long contain his wrath. I was expecting wrath Meaning for a second that, there. If we want to kill the swine, we'll have to be quick about it. Uh. Tis our belief that an Asian soul may be permanently undone if smitten by a sufficiently concentrated burst of pure evil. Okay, sure. The only trouble is, we can't say for sure how concentrated the burst needs to be. Without knowing how much ether an Asian soul is composed of, we're basically guessing. Our sole clue lieth in thy struggle with Lahabrea. 
I was about to say, at least as strong During as the, that encounter, like, mech Vidalent thing. bid you forge what mm. she called a blade of light. A weapon which took the form of a luminous stream of energy. Based on your description, we believe the blade with which you vanquished your foe was composed of ether. <laughs> Admittedly, your victory proved ephemeral, as La Habrea was able to use a crystal of darkness to flee into the space that lies between our no. world and the void. Yeah. The fact remains, however, that Heidelin placed the means to destroy the Asians in your hands. For Be that as thing. it may, it would be unwise to assume that she will do the same when we next encounter such a foe. Soon as Quite be so, silent. my lady. We must needs find the means to forge our own blade of ether, one to equal that which Heidelin did benevolently bestow upon her champion. That is all well and good, but it seems to me that producing such a blade will require a prodigious quantity of ether. Why not a species? Come, that should be enough. Prato? Um, oh, what if we had two pieces of white orosite, <laughs> one to trap the Asian, and the other to store the ether for the blade? Oh, uh, nice try. But it's as I said, the stone won't hold ether for any length of time. It between two? We'd still need to collect the stuff there and then, sorry to say. You know. And therein lies the rub. Hmm. Finding Just a way to create two the white blade arotites. whenever and wherever hmm. we choose. Or She's three. It would seem more research is in order. No, you'd only need to two of them because you're going to try and destroy the Asian when it's in the other crystal, so just bounce it between the two crystals of white etherite. I'm mm. going to linger a while, perform a few more tests on the Aurasite. Aurasite, even. You and know what I mean? could do with some help. I remember Aurasite, if I remember Why correctly, was a big thing in Final Fantasies 12 and My Tactics. Apologies, but yeah. I am required no at the waking side. It, it had to do with summoning. Lady Minfilia things. hath mm. given me sole charge of the premises. It would be unseemly to leave them unattended. Are you afraid of her? Sole charge, you say? So you're basically alone there then? Well, that settles it. Wait, I'll just have that? to come to you. <laughs> oh my. She'll just have to come to him. Oh no. <laughs> oh While dear. You were afield, word arrived from the Everyone's shop. very gestural. And I'm just like, Please, what? Uh, unhand me. The party was dispatched to investigate the incident at the Isle of Val. What they discovered was troubling, to say the least. According to the report, the Isle has been erased from existence. It was as if a hole had been torn in yeah, the, the island was gone. of reality. I know ah, the island was gone, but still. Yet the mystery endeth not with the Isle's disappearance. It Plugging has come to light that a number of scholars in various other locales were reported missing at a similar juncture. What's more, they all had something in common with the head of the students of Baldessian. Every last one of them was researching a phenomenon called dimensional compression, or the rejoining as the ancient texts call it. I'll be damned if that's a coincidence. I'll be damned if that's a coincidence. All indications involvement. But I sense that a force greater still is at work. The entity the dark beings call the one true god. We must pray that my dear friend Kryle regains consciousness soon. If she bore witness to the Isle of Val's Darn final violent. moments, she may Christians. be able to shed some light on this mystery. She might, but she probably won't. <laughs> Thanks for the 5k. Following the calamity. The forces of the 14th Imperial At least we don't have to go to Uldah. Those in strategic yep. locations across Eorzea. So I don't worry, we'll tell they accomplish this. It was suspected that they had received help. Clearly. I think that it came from Huayu. My right Why hand. you seriously what? It's nowhere near what that says. But whatever. There is more. We have reason to believe that Huayu didn't deal exclusively <sighs> with the 14th. She also answered to a higher authority in Gollumor. There's taking liberties in spelling, and then but there's just pretending that one word means... But this higher authority could not have been the Emperor. Uh, 
By consenting to the media project, Solus Zos Galvis showed himself to be more concerned about preventing the spread of primal influence than claiming Eorzea for the Empire. He would happily have seen the lot. I'm afraid of primal influence spreading. Let's release the most powerful Prime. A number of high ranking figures within the royal household were against the decision, but that they knew better than to oppose the Emperor openly. Of course, this didn't prevent them from making clandestine provisions in which Huayu played a part. Alas, these provisions did not prevent Dalamud from falling. Huayu. And the ensuing chaos changed Why? the face of the realm forever. Yet Eorzea survived. That angers me. <laughs> Coming from someone who's dyslexic, seeing a word that's apparently said like that, but spelled like that, is just a nightmare. It's like, what? And the Empire was left to rue its lack of a decisive means to eliminate the primals. Until, that is, it stumbled upon the Ultima weapon. It's like blood in pneumonia. Even when I see that word, I'm like, Sanna Menomina. It seemed to me the 14th had the might to overwhelm our weakened armies. The Black Wolf was wary of making the denizens of Eorzea desperate, lest more primals emerge to bleed the land. The discovery of the Ultima weapon, however, emboldened him to resume his war of conquest in earnest. But there was one in Garlemald who believed that Van Belsar's actions were premature. One who stood higher in the Imperial Army's chain of command. He ordered the Legatus to halt his advance, only to find that the Black Wolf had slipped its leash, and that the 14th now acted alone. In a bid to bring Van Belsar to heel, he used the agent he had planted in Ulda prior to the Calamity to undermine the Legion's efforts. A man who just outran Van that. Belsar was happy to oppose the late Emperor's decision to annihilate Eorzea. This could only be the former High Legatus of the Galian army, now known as Emperor Voris Zos Galvis. So he was Huayu's true master. But one of several in actual fact. We've learned that even as Huayu served the Empire's interests, Every time I she hear sold that Imperial name. secrets to a certain faction in Eorzea. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep saying it to annoy you. In so Bo doing, bubble of she helped rage. to maintain the status quo, thus prolonging the conflict. Considering who stands to profit from war, it isn't hard to imagine who her other masters were. Seven Hells! You mean to say that she was a double agent? Huh, triple! If you consider her services to Van Belsar and the new Emperor as separate. As neatly as these pieces seem to fit, one aspect of the puzzle remains unclear to me. By whose will was the Marshal feeding intelligence to the heretics? And try as I might, I fail to see how aiding their cause would profit either her Imperial or Monetarist masters. Could it be that another hand is at work here? No. If so, no. Why you must be made <sighs> to reveal whose it is. God damn it. That name. <sighs> <laughs> Not only have I lost a trusted friend, now I must interrogate her as a stranger. Not a pleasant task, I grant you, but a necessary one. Unless we weed out the ivy, root, stalk and stem, it will simply grow back. I know that full well. Those closest to oh. you have already been detained, and I will question them alongside her. To why? Like, it's like they can't even agree how it's supposed to be pronounced. There may be yep. unwitting abettors among them. All will be treated fairly. On that you have my word. Those who are innocent have no cause to fear. I'm sorry, but just you having a weird a name doesn't truth, make your General. like story more compelling. Just of weeding make out it something that's will not phonetically able to be said. Though it be for the sake of Eorzea, doubting yeah, one's like comrades is poison to the soul. Alpha and I isn't too bad. And with that, you I know, take my leave. Because there's Alpha and A-U-D, Ad. You know, Alpha and Ad. Alpha and... Where's your sister? I don't know, she just kind of buggered off after, like... I think, the, I think the writers forgot about her. Fifth or sixth time seeing her, and then she's All like, gone! All years, I've been made to dance to their tune. How could you, Huayu? How could you side with them? Those cankers 
who take from this land and give naught in return, who use their power to disempower and grow fat while the people starve. Because she's growing greedy. I know you can hear me, monitor as scum. Your crimes will not go unpunished. One day I will purge this I land like this man so much. Before the eyes of the twelve, I swear it. Why don't you marry him then? Because there's no wedding option. Overly dramatic Roban. Rah! Rah! <laughs> Rah! Yeah! Oh my god, the Empress has a stuffed noodle. Oh god. I'm the troll command. I shall have no further need of you this day. Your Who are you? Uh, just a lady in waiting. You're going to die, I think. I wouldn't say so. I fear that She's not, not even my own chambers shall remain private for long. Oh, space. Has the situation what? grown so grim? It's true. Whoa, what? Hey, what? Hi! Hello, does but... Ever since he proposed the Cardinal Reclamation Bill, Telegi Adelegi has risen to greater prominence upon the backs of impoverished refugees. The monetarists were ever united in their pursuit of profit, but the man's actions have torn a rift in their ranks. They snap at each other as rabid dogs. Yet now is not the time to be bickering among ourselves. Oh, hi! If this bickering is a threat to law and order, might you not have grounds to dissolve the syndicate? Would that the solution were so simple, Admiral. Alas, my moving to dissolve the syndicate is certain to spark outrage among the influential merchant class, whom the Cabal represents. This would serve to exacerbate the current unrest, and peace would slip still further away. Be they rich or poor, natives or refugees, all who reside in Uldar have a right to pursue happiness. It is the duty of a ruler to protect this right. If I am to perform my duty, I must needs tread warily. It would not do to make enemies heedlessly. Were Lord Lolorito here, he would doubtless Wait, say Lolorito. that I have my head in the clouds. Oh, right, that guy. Mm -hmm. A ruler is required to take a wide view. Try as we might to cater to all needs, some will inevitably be overlooked. As, but as you have informed oh, us, the monetarists take no Cannot view be of their own. They hunger for power while the masses starve. Oh. Are such a set Send me in! Send it me in and Scythia, and they'll all mysteriously burn to death in horrible, tragic accidents. To make Don't know what you're talking about. And the presence of a Galian agent within the immortal flames only makes matters Aye. worse. Even accounting for Uldar's historic reliance upon mercenaries, such a grievous breach of security is unprecedented. I fear this business will provide the monetarists with a rod to beat Rauban. Eorzea can ill afford for the immortal flames to be dampened now. Ere long, the Garlians will turn their ravenous gaze toward our lands once more. If we are to resist their might, our nations must stand together. Yet for this to happen, our nations must be whole. Cannot be done to improve the situation in Ulda. The true okay. wealth of Ulda lies in the health, <laughs> happiness, and hopes of her citizens. Lucky mouse cat. So adorable. The citizens hmm. shall never know these things, so long as their lives are ruled by the ambitions of the few. The monetarists claim to represent the best interests of the people, but in sooth they desire only to manipulate them for their own selfish ends. For the government to serve the people, it must be formed of the people. For Ulda to move forward, it is not only the syndicate that must be dissolved. But also your pro-democracy! She's Nay, also meant to dis just... dissolve the palace. My friends, it was for no other reason than to make known to you my intent that I requested your presence here. When I make my declaration to the people, chaos shall inevitably ensue. 
As the last monarch in the line of Ul, I make unto you this request. Try and peacekeep, I guess? Help Roban to preserve order and protect the yep. people. Forsake them, and you forsake yourselves. For a strong Eorzea will ever have need of a strong Ulda. Your Grace, are you certain of this? There is no other way. No, I can't really blame her. I mean, she's not like she has any other choice. A true republic. Both royalists uh, and monetarists possible. shall cease to be. Uldar will no longer belong to kings or queens or merchant princes, but to her people. Not to her people until those people get rich and take control by bribing uh, people, fixing elections. For casting aside all that you have told. That becomes even worse because there's no single single power head that can go. No. Beyond Meritocracy. Meritocracy is nice. to help my subjects. Although Rome was a meritocracy, and you saw how that went. Rome was a republic. Well, a semi merit. A semi-meritocratic republic, but still. Yeah, I thought it was a meritocratic. There's still a place where you could bribe your way up. What isn't it? Expected. Oh, dungeon requirement: bowl of embers hard, and the navel hard, and howling eye hard. What? 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 Can I just? Do, can we? No. Oh, we have to find them. Oh God. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, I hmm, bugger. Really? Yes. Well. Really? Ah. Uh. Fine. Well, I don't know. Well, let's end the episode here, and we'll do some research and figure things out. There's 22 minutes that we're in. Oh, whatever. We'll leave it here. So until next time, all the best and. Good night, everybody. We're probably going to fight them off camera, by the way. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to. You've already seen them. Yeah. It's just the hard version, so it takes longer. <laughs>